All right, first of all, I want to thank everybody for coming. And uh, actually, before I even thank everybody for coming, I should have, let me rewind. Bram, thank you for securing this location today. This is a beautiful home. Probably, yeah. no, let me, yeah. I don't know how many people I offend when I say this, but it's probably the prettiest house in Memphis. And I'm just really happy to be here. And, I, and when this thing, uh, when, we're, when we're wrapping this uh, fundraiser up today, I'm probably going to have to walk around and explore a little bit because you just, you just feel the history when you're in here. And um, I mean, we're lucky to live in, in such an interesting city. I, I've had so many people, you know, ask me, you know, um, especially my, my, I think I brought this up at the Chow Bella restaurant or the, uh, at the fundraiser there, but so many people, you know, from my friends in Nashville be like, oh, what's, what's, you know, what's so special about Memphis? And I'll say, man, it's the culture. It's the, it's the soul. It's the, it's the, it's the character that exists in our city. The, the people here, it, they just have a different, a different feel to them, and you can't beat that. I mean, I lived in Nashville for a little bit when I interned in the state legislature and loved it up there. It's nice, but I just I feel like it doesn't have the same, the same grit and soul and character that we have in this city. I think at the end of the day, you know, when uh, the Nashville scene, as I said in my video, uh, asked what's, what, what the heck is Memphis so happy about, my answer immediately is our culture. And um, so anyways, it's awesome to be in such a beautiful home, and it's awesome to be so, with so many great friends. I can't thank y'all enough uh, for the support y'all have shown me this campaign. I'm very fortunate. I mean, the, everything that I've gone through on this campaign from recently and through the whole time <laughs> has been, uh, has, has, it's, it's been tough. I mean, it's tough putting yourself out there, especially as a 32-year-old. Uh, man as I am, I mean, going and running for, for office, I mean, it's, it's not easy, especially when, uh, you, I mean, people, a lot of people out there feel like it's their turn or, you know, and they're, you're supposed to wait. And, you know, I look back to our founders who were very young, and I, and I look back to so many other leaders who were young in our history. And, you know, at the end of the day, yes, I'm 32 years old, but I've been doing community activism. I've been working my heart out for over 10 years now. I didn't just wake up yesterday and go, oh, politics looks neat. I'm going to run for office. That's, that's not my approach. I've been doing this since I was in my early 20s. Um, anyways, but uh, yeah, it's been, it's been a tough race, and unfortunately, it costs money to get our word out. And y'all have noticed, we've gotten it out there. I mean, it's, yeah. our signs are everywhere. I've, I want to say I've sent out more mailers, or at least the same amount of mailers as any of my opponents. Um, I, I've hit 5,000 doors myself. I want to say, please, please find it. Thank you. A lot of a lot of people, including family, come up to me and they're concerned and they're like, "John, are you eating?" It's like, "Yes, I'm. I'm eating." It's just you know, I'm out hitting doors every day. I'm usually hitting on average around 100 doors a day, and when you do that, yeah, it's it's kind of a weight loss program too. Maybe I should start an infomercial on that. But um, but yeah, it takes a lot out of you, and uh, and I've I've poured my heart and soul into this campaign. Whether you look at the platform and or the bio, where I basically you know open my heart about what my life experience has been. Or um, whether you look at anything that's happened on this campaign, it's 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 been a lot. I mean, where I, when I took the money we raised, uh, let me just go into this for a second. With uh, with the campaigns I've run in the past, I've learned how to properly manage funds for a campaign so that we I don't, I'm not wasting it on a lot of things that most campaigns waste their money on. I know where to spend the money. And when it came to this campaign, the one thing that I wanted that I knew I had to cut because I don't have infinite amount of resources. Well, I don't have as big of a staff as I'd like to have. I'm used to having a whole army for Cohen, and we have a much bigger district to cover, so you kind of have to have that there. But with this, it's a smaller district, still larger than it should be because of our wonderful super districts. But it's, uh, but it's still, it's still a smaller district. And so uh, my solution, in order to be able to afford to do the mail program and all the other many things that I'm doing right now, I don't know if y'all saw the flyer today, but I had an ad in there. Um, but with all the different print media and all the different um, ways of voter contact that I'm pushing. Uh, I had to find a place to save money, and well, mostly that was staff. And the way I made up for that was I did the work myself. Uh, a lot of candidates and you know, people at doors, you know, like, oh yeah, somebody from this campaign came by, and then da 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 da, and I'll tell you, know, I'll talk to him for a little bit, and I'm like, yeah, did the candidate come to your doors? Like, no. And um, and actually, I'll never forget this. This is actually a better example, and it's the one I should have gone to first. I was out knocking on doors in uh, Binghampton, or is it? Yeah, it was, it was North Binghampton, and uh, a lady came outside, and she's like. You know, telling me honest things that I, you know, I grew up, I, I grew up off, you know, Riverdale and Shelby Drive, as I like to point out. I grew up in Southeast Memphis, but I mean, that's a middle class neighborhood. I, I never had to deal with a lot of the things that some of the neighborhoods I knocked on have to deal with every day. And when I'm talking to this lady, I mean, she was complaining about, you know, there was a, two lots down a vacant home where the grass was as tall as cornfields. And where she pointed to the home, you know, sitting behind the cornfield that had been sitting there for 12 years vacant, boarded up. 
Now, obviously, we want to refurbish it and have people living there, but if that's not going to happen, we should tear it down so that a criminal element and getting attracted to there. And you know, she told me things that I never thought about. I mean, she said, you know, I'm worried about my daughter walking by that that grassy-looking cornfield place because you know somebody might come out and grab her, and it's like, you know. I never thought of tall grass as being a, a dangerous thing, but it just, I don't know, it blew my mind some of the things I learned knocking on doors in those neighborhoods. And, you know, she, she one of the questions she asked me, she's like, uh, well, where, why, are you, why are you out here now that you're running for office? Why weren't you out here before? And I was like, well, I was doing this, this, this. I was able to explain everything. And at the end of the conversation, I was able to say, well, has anybody else been to your door that's running for office? She goes, no. <laughs> so, <laughs> she took a yard sign. But, <laughs> but. You know, through the hard work, and uh, I've learned a lot. And again, I, I've managed the money well. We've we've been able to get our, our word out there on a on a on a you know decent size, but it's a still a reasonable budget. That being said, we've got early voting coming up. In case any of y'all weren't already aware, most of you probably are since you're here. But um, early voting starts tomorrow, September 18th, it, um, and it goes through October 3rd. You can vote at any early voting location in the county as long as you're registered here. And um, we're going to actually have an early vote rally tomorrow at uh, Greater Lewis Baptist Church, uh, ba Greater Lewis Street Baptist Church on East Parkway in Poplar. So hopefully all will join us. We're going to be there from 5.30 until, um, until around 7. After that, we're going to be going to Minglewood Hall where I have five musical acts who are kind enough to play and a bunch of comedians. And it's going to be hosted by my friend Doug Gillen. It's going to be a blast. But yeah, we're going to start out early voting strong. And I'm hoping that y'all can get all your friends and uh, family out to the rally. So you get your vote over with early, then it's going to make it a lot easier for me to get you to help me volunteer for early voting, please. But uh, but uh, definitely, I'm going to need all hands on deck, though. This is this is going to be it, and we're finally getting towards the end now. I've put in the work, and I'm fortunate that uh, because I have so many great friends like y'all who came to this tonight, that we're going to be able to put our early vote program into place and make it happen. So thank y'all again so much. And. <laughs>